five. All right, so first off, state your name and where you're from for the camera. I'm uh, Jacob Kill from Polson, Montana. And uh, how do you think you've helped the people of the city of Renz's past? Me personally, um, I think I came in with a chainsaw crew, so a lot of wood removal happened with us, and, and that was kind of the big impact that happened down here. The wind tossed around a lot of trees, so <laughs> I think that's probably the biggest impact I've had down here. And how did you hear about the Aransas Pass Burners Without Borders project? Oh, interesting story, actually. Uh, uh, my partner I came down with, uh, we initially came as an independent VOAD, uh, but, you know, we were going to work under BWB, uh, you know, through uh, work referrals. So I kind of got on the map and was looking at uh, Texas and saw Aransas Pass. And we figured, you know, just the location, how much water was around it, and how exposed it was to the coast, that that would probably be one of the more big impact areas. And so he said that he had uh, uh, some connections down there uh, with uh, some way or another. He was connected with uh, Burners Without Borders. And so contacted uh, the guys there at Aransas Pass and showed up, and here we are. <laughs> So how do you think that the people of Aransas Pass have responded to the Burners Without Borders relief efforts? Burners Without Borders, I think they're taking them in. And I'm sure anybody who knows Burners Without Borders, you know, they might have been a little skeptical at first. But then after you see how, Burners, how much work Burners Without Borders does, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. It's, they, they do more work, they, we, I guess I should say, <laughs> have done more work down here than a lot of people have. And it's because we scoot past the politics, you know what I mean? There's this, with a lot of other organizations, volunteer organizations, there's just all these guidelines they gotta go from. And long term, I get it, I mean, that kind of works, but they start forgetting about the person we're helping. It's, it's more like a job to them, you know what I mean? As opposed to the core focus, we're, we're helping victims of the hurricane. I think BWB's the best as far as down here so far, BWB's doing that the best. <laughs> And what was your favorite thing so far about your experience? <laughs> favorite thing. So with the tree removal we've been doing, of course, there's some doozies out there. Uh, there was this trailer park. Interesting enough, it was the uh, uh, setting, the, the uh, filming area for the film, what was it? Uh, the Legend of Billie Jean, I believe it was a Christian Slater movie. So uh, this place got just tore up and lots of trees, lots of trees down, lots of trees half coming down. They needed to come down or they're gonna kill somebody. So there was this one kind of smack dab in the middle that, I mean, could have possibly reached all the way around it with three people, maybe. <laughs> it took like a solid three to five minutes to get through this tree enough to start falling it. But when it did finally come down, I mean, we initially before safety-wise, we cleared like the whole trailer park, like coned it off, caution tape, you know what I mean? It, it, it was crazy. And when it did come down, it was like thunder and hurricane, all of, or thunder and earthquake and hurricane all at once. Just, you know, I'm sure they felt us in the next county when that tree came down. <laughs> and do you feel in any way differently uh, after your experience? Absolutely. The, uh, my time with Burners Without Borders has exposed me to a culture that I didn't know I needed. And it's, you know, of course there's the crazy, there's the party, whatever, but just, just the tightness and kind of, uh, I guess, family feeling you get. Just all the Burners Without Borders, they're all just one big happy family. And it's, it's a crazy thing to be a part of, you know what I mean? Even just as short time as I've been here a part of it, I've loved every moment of it, you know? And do you think it's important to do what we're doing into the future and why? Yes, yeah, well, this, this is a big one actually. Cause, so in any disaster, they need a lot of resources. They need a lot of help, every disaster, any disaster. So of course donations are great, donations are good, money is good, you know, specific donations for specific uh, um, uh, victims or things like that are great, but what we really need in any disaster, hurricane, tornado, whatever, is hands. We, there, there's always just a shortage of hands. There's always plenty of money to come in to, you know, get the resources, the equipment, you know, the, the transportation for the volunteers that come down, but there's just never enough hands to cover the scale of what it is. So 
what what people really need down here and, and any other disaster at all is they need a place for volunteers to go, a place for people to get connected with the victims and you know, with the jobs, like what needs to be done. You know, there needs to be an organization like BWB who goes around asking the victims, like what is needed? Get it all on paper, get it all documented, and then, you know, that way a volunteer just comes in and just goes right to work. And more importantly, it needs to be long-term. Like it has, BWB sticks around for a while. You know what I mean? There's a lot of places it'll come in initially, you know, light a fire, really, you know, make an impact for a couple of weeks and then take off. You know, this, none of this is ever short term. BWB, I've noticed, sticks around. They get personal with the locals. They get personal with the volunteers, the long term and the short term volunteers. And I think that's one of the most important things Burners Without Borders is doing is setting up a location where the hands can go and it'll stay there long enough that if anybody asks, where do I go to volunteer? Well, go to these guys, BWB down here. And what was your favorite? A uh, piece of equipment to operate. <laughs> so just recently, uh, we used this, oh, what was it, 40, 40, 46 inch chainsaw? Oh, that thing was beautiful. It was like a motorcycle with a chain on it. Uh, and the guy lit it almost riding it, you know. <laughs> but this, this thing was going through a tree that, you know, I mean, bigger than the saw itself, like butter. <sighs> it, ooh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Felt like I could have rode it home, you know. <laughs> And do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with the world? <sighs> it's a crazy world right now. The disasters are not stopping. At this time right now, there's one hitting Ireland. That's not very common. Not very common for multiple hurricanes to hit the coast all at once. I mean, everywhere from Mexico, halfway up the East Coast is either buried in sand, ripped up by wind, on fire, or you know anything like that. And that, Brings me back to my previous point about BWB is right now people don't need money. They need hands, they need help, they need people to just get this figured out. My message to the world, you got any free time at all or you know somebody who does, get them connected with an organization like BWB to get them in the action, to get them down here to have a place to go so they can <laughs> help. Nice. That's what they need. That was your sound bite, that was really good. Um, so what have you, and you have significant, do you have significant experience in working disaster relief? Oh yeah, I've been, uh, I've been working, me personally, in disaster relief, mostly hurricanes, since Hurricane Ike and all the way up, you know, Sandy, Storms Gustav, Athena, things like that. Uh, my partner's been working since before Katrina on hurricanes, all the way up to now. Um, it's, uh, for me, a lot of it was usually, I'm used to a lot of sand and wet, you know, flood damage. Hurricane Harvey down here in Texas is actually the first time I've dealt with wind damage and trees. I mean, the wind picks it up and throws it through a house. I'm not really used to that. So I'm learning new skills with saws, you know, it's a pretty cool world. Now, as an organization, how do you feel Burners Without Borders, A, stacks up against the other VOADs that are doing similar services, and how are they different? I can answer that in one statement. They are a bit unorthodox, but I feel like in most cases they do better. Depending on how you look at it, sure. Global scale politics, I mean, they might not fit the agenda, but again, we go right back to what's the point? Helping the victim, helping the person. That doesn't just necessarily mean cleaning their house or fixing their property. Sometimes that means they want a hug. I mean, sometimes they just want somebody to talk to, somebody to tell the story to. And I think that's something the that BWB does better than anyone around here. You know, all the other organizations want to come in like they're, you know, too professional. They want to be, yeah, gung-ho, good to go. They want to give the impression that they're like military straight, you know. There's no personal connection there. All these victims see is this guy with this T-shirt coming on, coming in saying, what's your problem? Okay, I fixed it, goodbye. I've seen multiple times down here with BWB, we'll come in, we'll do a job, we'll make a connection, and they'll stay friends after they leave the work site. I think that is far more important, and I think BWB does that better than anybody else that I've seen in my whole almost decade uh, worth of disaster relief. Another gold gem. That's good, we're done. That was, see, that was a better 